bad for those guys down there in that locker room. But as I told them, the way they worked and the way they prepared and all that and the way they played doesn't guarantee anything. It just gives you a chance. But we're now giving ourselves a chance and we're just not quite ready yet, I guess, to uh, finish it. But that's sun's going to come up tomorrow and we're going to keep working and we're going to get better and we'll eventually get there and I won't have to say yet. And that's me and it's the staff and it's the players to everybody, but I'm proud of our guys, proud of our staff. And we're going to keep getting better. Questions? Greg, you talked about the margin of error being slim. You still were able to overcome some errors and still be there for the better part of the game. Can you just talk about that aspect and moving forward and being able to, to do that today? Well, I appreciate that, Bobby, but that, I don't know if I agree with you, right? The margin of error is real slim, and when we made errors, they cashed in. And um, we had opportunities. We had the ball 10 times inside the 10-yard line. You know, they're good. They're number one team in the country for a reason. They don't hand that, you know, that ranking out to just anybody. So we knew exactly what it, it did. You know, no one ever played a perfect game, but we knew we were going to have to play uh, one play at a time really, really about as well as we could. And at times we did that. I thought the defense at times were spectacular, right? Um, just not ready yet. I'm going to keep saying that word yet because this is going to get done. Greg, like you said, facing the number one team in the nation, one could look at this game and take it as a moral victory. Do you take it as that? I mean, what's the feeling in the locker room after a loss like that? No, I don't believe in moral victories, no. I believe that you learn lessons, and we learned some lessons today. I did. Players did. Um, but no, moral victories, I don't really. We got a, we got a really tough game against Iowa here in seven days. And we got to go out to Iowa City, which is a tough place to play. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. We, we started downstairs when, I, when we broke it down. Greg, you seem to have them on their heels. And early in the second half, you go down to the 20, and there's the one play, the little looping pass that seems to turn everything. Can you talk about that play? Yeah, I mean, if it works, it's the greatest call, and we're up. Uh, it would have been 16-7 at that point, right? You know, same thing with the sneak play that got handed to Kyle. That did work. You know, you got to be willing to try stuff in a game where you know that it is – they're a good team. Yet we didn't go crazy with all a bunch of stuff because I felt we could do just what we did. We could run the football if we stuck to it. Um, Kyle Manungai in the offensive line thought they ran the ball hard. Yeah, Gavin ran the ball hard. Sam got in there. He ran the ball hard. So – Yep. You mentioned the 10 times inside the 10. And obviously, the red zone struggles were evident today. What, uh, what, what led to those struggles inside the, inside the 10? Well, I mean, some of it was execution. Some of it was they're really good. You know, they're number one in the country. They have one of the top defenses in the country. You know, we, we went out there and did things that other people haven't done to them. But it wasn't good enough. You know, that's why I said it's yet. There's a lot of great things, and we watch that tape, you say, oh my goodness, look at that. Because that, that's good players you're doing it against. But we're just not ready yet. On the, uh, the pick six that Tom mentioned, the, there was some thought that Kyle got hit when he tried to make the catch, potential targeting. Obviously, they didn't call targeting, but from your vantage point, did you think? Hard for me to see, what'd you think? I thought it was close. Um, so I'll go through the procedure that I do every week, and I'll turn the play in, and then I'll hear what and what, and that's life. Greg, just um, your defense, obviously, as, as you said, you thought that they played really well. The fact that they're able to do this against the number one team and a really, really good offense with that many playmakers, I guess, what does it say about their continued <laughs> growth? Yeah, we're getting, we're getting better on defense. We're getting better on offense. We're getting better in the kicking game. Um, those two receivers are both first-round draft picks, okay? And I think they were held to something like 50-some-odd yards together, both of them. Those are two first-round draft picks. I think our kids 
But again, for us to win that game, we had to be darn near perfect, and we weren't. I wasn't, the players weren't, our coaches weren't. So we'll keep battling away. Uh, but there's nobody that's saying, oh, that was a good close effort. You know, no, no, no. There's two things. There's winning and there's losing. Those are the only two things that happen in a game. Greg, recognizing what you just said about winning and losing, uh, you've played this Ohio State program. But the Rutgers has played it nine times, and it hasn't been close. And I think for me, it's the idea you guys were able to run the ball, and it wasn't a mismatch in the trenches. Is that to you a sign that this thing is going in the right direction? The, the fact? I think it's one of the signs. I think there's a lot of signs. Um, the way that we played defense today, we've played all season, the way that we ran the ball. But we also gave up a pick six. So there's a lot of signs, good and not so good. But we're getting better. I, I, I don't know how to put it other than we're not there yet. We're a work in progress. We're getting better. We're just not there against the number one team in the country, not quite yet. And we have to. You know, you can't, you can't say, well, we're going to get there. you got to go make, make yourself get there. So that's what we'll do. We'll come back in this room. We'll be honest with each other tomorrow. And those kids love each other. Those coaches love those kids. And we're just going to keep going. And eventually we're going to get there. Coach, you talked a little bit about you know the success that Kyle Nangai was able to have running the ball and other guys were able to have running the ball. Uh, what did you make of you know the role that the offensive line played in terms of the run blocking and, and facilitating? That's always, that's always the hardest thing for me to comment on because you know not unlike what you see, it looks like a mosh pit of people. And sometimes Kyle comes spitting out of there and sometimes he doesn't, right? But you don't rush for the yards that, that he did and that, and that Gavin did without some good offensive line play. It just doesn't happen. So... Um, Coaches are never satisfied, obviously. Execution is such a finite thing. So we'll, we'll just keep working and get it fixed. We'll go Christian, Josh, and Steve. Coach, uh, Gavin started the game. I think it was 0 for 5, uh, but bounced back in the second, third quarter. And in a big game and a big moment, what did you see from him? Body language on the sidelines, but just also how it translated on the field with his development. Hey, there's never any moment that's too big for Gavin. I can promise you that. Gavin is, uh, he's a cool customer. They've made a lot of quarterbacks look like that all year, right? We're talking about what might be one of the top five, de not it, not might be, he's one of the top five defenses in America. And as I said, and everybody thought I was joking, you know, they'll all be in camps. I don't know if they'll all make teams. There's only 1,696 guys in America that play, are active players in the National Football League. But they'll all be in camps. They're all players that the, the National Football League are going to give a chance. So, they do that to a lot of folks. We just, uh, just not quite there yet. Coach, as a whole, how do you feel a defense played today against Ohio State from the first half to the second half? Yeah, they played, I thought they played some really good football. There was a couple plays that we all want to have back, but you know, there's some critical plays, but I think the defense kept us in the game and then the offense got rolling. Uh, if you get behind, it's awfully hard to do what we did because if you get behind, you have to throw the ball. We were able to, to play our way into where we made it a really competitive game. But again, I'm not going to end on any answer with that. That's not good enough. That's not what we're here to do. We're not here to get close. So, and I know I'm speaking for them and it's not just me. Final question. Can you take us through the decisions on, on the three field goals in the first half? And did you, did you think about going on any of those? Well, yeah, you always think about it, right? And you have analytics that you're, that you're reading and you have the game itself. But as you go into that game and, you know, it's 7 nothing at the end of the quarter and then it's, it's a 7 nothing, Yeah, 7 nothing at the end of the quarter. Then you have a chance. We know we're getting the ball back to start the second half. You know, had we not taken the, the – I thought the killer play is we were first, the, first and goal on the two and then all of a sudden it's second goal on the three. Right and just a, a bad, you know, they're good. They penetrated and made a play. That changes things immensely there. Um, but you know, knowing you're getting the ball back to start the half, and knowing the way you're playing defense, I thought that that was the prudent thing to do. But trust me, I wanted to. It's, you got to do everything in your power not to to be the fan and go for it. Right? You got to look at it, measure it as the coach, and say, okay, this is all the thing that's happening today. Analytics are great, but they're dangerous because they're dead numbers. They've happened already. You're living it right then and there. You got to know what, how is this game going? And um, I thought we made the right decision in retrospect. Who knows? Maybe we should have. Who knows? I don't know. 
if you if you score, it's like the question about the the pop, the little dump pass. If he catches it and scores, we're like, man, what a call, right? And that's life. That's inches is life. But I, you know, that, it's not just in football; it's everything. But I, I am. I'm proud of. I'm proud of our guys. No moral victories. We're not there yet. Really proud of our student section that was cranking. That was really, uh, you know, they give us a home field advantage. Um, but now we got a real big, tough task in front of us. Go play it. If you've never been there, it's uh, it's one heck of an environment. So we got to get our guys ready, and they're a good football team, and much like us, they're going to play nose to nose. So we got a we got a huge challenge ahead of us next week. We got to lick our wounds a little bit here and and, uh, and get back to work. So again, I appreciate you guys covering us.